the Wayland train has left the station, traveling at full speed to destination desktop. No matter what you do, this is not going to be slowed down. But that doesn't mean there aren't still major problems that need to be dealt with. One of them being accessibility. Now, it's not like accessibility is in a perfect state on X11. Some of it is maintained, but a lot of it was written like two decades ago and is held together with hopes and prayers. And a lot of that tooling doesn't work or doesn't work as expected when running under Wayland, leaving those users in a far worse state than when they began. Think of things like on-screen keyboards, zooming, screen readers, and especially desktop automation. There are ways to do desktop automation, but a lot of them involve completely circumventing Wayland and running software at root. And just a few days ago, this post was made over on r slash Fedora, Important, we may need to pause the retirement of Xorg and focus on accessibility of Wayland for everyone. This also got cross-posted over onto r slash Linux. What does the greater Linux community think? And this got a ton, a ton of feedback on both of the threads. A lot of people had a lot of things to say. But I haven't seen anybody talking about this outside of Reddit. So here we are. A friend reached out to me to express his fear about Xorg being retired because of the flakiness of Wayland, specifically in regards to on-screen keyboard availability and reliability. He doesn't expand upon exactly what the issue means here. I do know there aren't that many on-screen keyboards available, but my assumption here is it is related to the general flakiness of the input method protocol, which was developed multiple years ago and then really hasn't been touched since then. Libra made it for their phone, and then it kind of just, like, is there without actually getting worked on. Input method editing is one thing, but when it comes to on-screen keyboards, there is a very small group of people that actually need to use them. So there aren't that many people trying to work on that specific problem. I transitioned from a Linux admin career to enterprise web development a decade ago, and oh boy, do we have problems too. So I am a bit out of touch. When I use Linux desktop, I use Fedora. I am a strong proponent of progress and maintainability. I've always supported Wayland and its effort, but my friend's concern gives me pause, but enough about me. So my friend now has good command of two fingers, but may be limited to only his eyes and voice in the future. He is more knowledgeable about Linux and is the best admin I know. I am dogmatic, but he values my opinion and likes the idea of progress for desktop. Where is the best platform to work out the specifics of his needs? Should I create an issue for Fedora? It is enterprise focused and I'm sure this is a concern. Gnome, this concerns their whole philosophy, or Wayland, the potential heart of the problem, but far from the whole. We need your help, thank you. Any guidance, direction, or constructive criticism would be helpful. Thank you, r slash Fedora. And as I said, they got quite a bit of that. Just... Probably too much to go through, actually. <laughs> Update. Thank you, everyone, for your thoughtful responses on the situation at hand. I understand now that Fedora is for moving forward regardless of the concerns, and I may have put too much stock in Fedora is the distro for up-to-date, forward-thinking changes. No, that is exactly what they are doing. Fedora is the distro that is up-to-date for forward-thinking changes. The problem is is Fedora is very much this experimental testing ground where they will adopt things before they are ready for the general public. Go back to things like Systemd, Pipewire, when they originally started shipping Wayland by default. Fedora has always been doing things a little bit before they are completely ready. And you shouldn't recommend Fedora as like a beginner-friendly distro or a distro which you expect to be this like stable baseline. If you want something stable, go to Debian. It's going to be really out of date and things will just change every couple of years. Fedora is not like that. And they'll stop promoting Fedora as such. 
I do not have much personal use for Fedora Enterprise Linux, but I know some orgs and corps that do very care much about accessibility and may be concerned about Red Hat's development. Fedora, and by proxy Red Hat, is abusing its users for feedback and bug reports for software they know is broken. Now, I do think that is taking it a little bit too far. What Fedora is doing is they are pushing ahead with software they know is broken as sort of a... I guess a way to encourage getting it fixed quicker. Because this is a big part of the reason why we are still dealing with these basic Wayland protocols. X Wayland has been such a strong safety net that you just didn't have to deal with a lot of them. If you push forward saying Wayland is the only thing we're going to do, a lot of these accessibility problems are going to be brought to light and are going to have to be dealt with way quicker than they were before. Now, that might not work out in the short term, but in the long term, it seems like it's doing a relatively good job. If this was just about on-screen keyboards, that obviously is a big problem that needs to be dealt with. But it's only one problem, and dealing with one thing isn't that big of a deal. It's not just one thing, though. One of the major things is global shortcuts, as in controlling an application when its window is not in focus, or in some cases, it just doesn't actually have a window. Now, I've discussed this in a bunch of different videos in the context of OBS and video capture, and the problem hasn't properly been solved yet. A couple of desktops do have hacks to kind of make it work. On Hyperland, you can let specific applications listen in on specific key presses. On KDE, you can let all X11 applications listen in on key presses. And we do technically have a proper solution to be used on Wayland, that being the Global Keyboard Shortcut Portal. The issue was opened back in 2021, and I believe it was marked as completed in, yeah, September of 2022. So the solution is there as a portal. The problem with the portal is KD has support for the portal. But guess who doesn't have support for the portal yet? Wow, it's GNOME. Now this ties quite well into what Fedora is doing. As of a month ago, it is now a work in progress. I don't know if it would have started at this time if there wasn't the discussion happening on Fedora. Maybe it would have, maybe it wouldn't have. Either way, this is now in the process of getting done. When it's going to get done, I don't really know. On the WL root side, there is also an open issue. An open issue that is completely stalled because uh, they don't really know how they want to implement it. Someone did in here suggest just copy what Hyperland is doing, but yeah, nothing here is really happening. The last comment was in September of 2023. And getting this portal implemented is absolutely vital to having screen readers like Orca actually function properly under Wayland. Even though it's still not a perfect solution, but it is better than absolutely no keyboard support full stop. There is one big downside to this portal, and that is that Orca will no longer be able to conditionally consume keys. Whenever the user is in a context to use certain key bindings, an updated list of bindings will need to be sent to the portal. The list would look something like this. If a user finds themselves in focus of an input box or leaves or moves from a document to an application, a new set of key bindings will need to be sent. This will let the compositor know that you are now listening for different key bindings. Interrupting key presses and releases as they come in is universally disliked amongst the Wayland crowd. They already need to implement some portions of that kind of logic for input method editors, and apparently it causes a lot of headaches. Basically, every time the user changes context, a new set of keys will need to be sent to the portal. And depending on how the portal is going to be implemented, this might prompt the user to go and accept a new set of keys, basically just disrupting your entire workflow. Then there is the UI automation problem. So on X11, it was way too open. So you could write an X11 keylogger in like one or two lines of Python, and you didn't need root access. You could just run it, and it would just do the thing. On Wayland, that's not possible. But with this level of freedom, it allowed you to do some really cool things, like inject virtual keyboard presses, virtual mouse movements, virtual mouse presses. So I looked at an app a couple of years ago. I don't remember what the name of the app was, 
but basically it turned your entire screen into a grid. You could press a letter, and it will jump your cursor into a quadrant. Then you press another letter, it would break that section down into another quadrant, and jump it there. That is not something that is possible to do on Wayland. Now it can be done, because if you just circumvent Wayland and do everything at the root level, you can inject whatever you want. But it's generally not advised to run a bunch of random software at root, just so you can have some basic functionality. As I said, this could be very easily abused on X11, but going as far as Wayland did, which is completely removing it, is way too far. Now, some GUI toolkits do have APIs where you can control those specific applications, but full desktop control is just not really possible in a general sense. There might be a specific compositor that allows you to do things, but you can't do it on GNOME, you can't do it on KDE, and you definitely can't do it on most things. Then you have the accessibility that does exist, but oftentimes resources get in the way of good maintenance. It would be nice if every part of the desktop was really well maintained, but that's not the case on Windows or macOS, and they have billion dollar companies backing them, and it's definitely, definitely not the case when a lot of the developers for a project are volunteers. And I'm not blaming the developers that a lot of things aren't maintained, they just don't have the resources to do so in many cases. If you're a volunteer, you are likely going to work on the things that you find interesting, and if you're not someone who is going to benefit directly from this software, oftentimes developers are just not going to work on it. And it's not like accessibility just means one individual thing. Again, if it was like that, that would make it a really easy problem to solve. When we say accessibility, we're referring to this giant landscape with all of these different people with all of these different needed requirements. As an example, the user in this post had very little finger mobility, but recently I had a game dev on my podcast who doesn't have that problem. Instead, he is vision impaired and needs to run his desktop at something like 2000% zoom, whereas another user might have perfect vision, but have really shaky hands and are completely unable to do things like a hold action or easily click on really small icons. Now, regarding this user's main point, Red Hat absolutely wants to end Xorg. At this point, they are basically the only ones still maintaining it and are forced to do so up until 2032 when their final version of RHEL stops supporting Xorg. After that point, I don't know who's still going to be working on it. I'm sure somebody will, and if they don't sort out Wayland over there, there might still be some OpenBSD guys doing it, but by that point, most people will have moved away. And a lot of Fedora maintainers are also on the Wayland train as well. And I know I said it before, but I'll say it again, Fedora is very much an experimental distro. I know they don't advertise themselves as such, but if you look at their actions over the years, it is crystal clear what Fedora is. The problem is a lot of people aren't looking into that history and they see Fedora and think, oh, this is basically just a Red Hat base Ubuntu, but that's not what it is. And I really hope that one day people finally understand that. Now, a few people in the thread did make a suggestion that the poster wasn't super happy about. I really cannot express how much the suggestion of just make a spin for accessibility sounds disturbing. I doubt the version will be front and center on the site next to download now for workstation. This is segregation on a public Linux desktop distribution. Again, this person likes to use very inflammatory terminology. I don't think it is that bad. But I do expect there to be people that make either spins, distros, flavors, whatever term you want to use, where the whole thing is we are that distro, but we still have support for X11. Like there are distros like Devuin, which are just Debian, but no system D. People are going to do that. Do I think they're going to be popular? No. Do I think that's a good solution for accessibility? No, absolutely not. I do think it's a stopgap, but the better stopgap is just keep using distros that support X11 if you need to use X11. At this stage, Fedora is the only distro that is talking about dropping it. Now, GNOME is probably going to drop X11 support over the next coming years. Hopefully, by that point, they actually sort out at least the baseline accessibility stuff like making sure screen readers work properly. At the end of the day, it's a matter of numbers. 
and I know this might sound harsh, but this is the reality of it. If, say, 50% of users need something, it's really worth doing. If maybe 20% need it, it's probably worth doing. If we're down to 5%, maybe you should do it. 1%, well, now it's pretty low on the list. But what if it's something that maybe 0.1% of users need? Again, this goes back to the fact that a lot of these projects are primarily developed by volunteers, and you might want to work on something that a lot of users are going to be affected by. But if maybe, I don't know, a couple hundred or a couple thousand users are going to be affected, maybe it's not that high on your priority list. And maybe when a lot of people are volunteers, it's not going to be that high on many people's list, and it just doesn't get dealt with for a very long time. There is great accessibility work coming out of both GNOME and Red Hat, but today it is not in a perfect state. And whilst I do support Wayland, and Wayland is the direction we are going, if you need to use X, there is nothing wrong with doing so. Keep using it if that is the best thing for your system. But as always, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you someone that relies on accessibility? Do you make use of X11? Do you make use of Wayland and the state that it's in for you is in a good enough state? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and...